Hey, what's up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick, flying solo. Yeah, just watched the Warriors lose to the Knicks. Uh, That game sucked, so I'm going to keep this real short. First off, it was pretty clear that the Warriors were the ones playing the second night of a back-to-back. Surprising, though, because they beat the Spurs the previous night pretty handily, so you figured that maybe they would have some of that energy. But maybe they just thought that because they were on a roll and the Knicks are the Knicks, even though the Knicks have been playing well, maybe they just thought that the Knicks would just roll. You know, we just roll over for them. But that's not the case. The Knicks came out and they were just hitting a bunch of threes. They were playing with energy and they were playing pretty good defense. And the Warriors in general, they just looked super duper flat. Nothing was going. Steph wasn't getting going. The energy from the Spurs game just wasn't there at all. And I just got to say, there were so many fouls in this game. I know that the fouls were relatively even from team to team. But the stoppages and the breaking of the flow of the game, the lack of a rhythm, that really favored the Knicks. Any team coached by Tom Thibodeau wants to muck up and slow down the game. This played right into their hands, slowed it down. The Warriors couldn't get out and run. That combined with their poor energy just made this kind of, I don't know, just bleh. I think during the broadcast, someone said that These are the same refs from the previous night against the Spurs. And I was like, yo, are they calling so many fouls because they're tired and so they're trying to catch their breath? You know, like, are they just getting breathers with every uh, free throw? I mean, come on. And then on top of that, Draymond Green gets ejected with a second technical for yelling at James Wiseman. Apparently, the ref, who's in his first season in the NBA, Thought he was yelling at him, so he called the second tech, couldn't rescind it or wouldn't. I don't know the rules for that. And Draymond was gone. And just like that, the one person who could probably force energy into the team was gone. And you could just see that they were listless without him, just like the first handful of games where he was out. Again, Steph leads by example, but Draymond, he's the motor. He's the heart and soul, as everyone says. And you just see how important he is to keep these young guys and these new guys going. And hopefully the Warriors don't miss out on the playoffs or whatever by like a game. Because even though they started off slow, you had a sense that maybe they could bring it back. But once Draymond was gone... It was over. You know, it was pretty much like dust. This is the first game all season that I just wanted to shut off. But I didn't. I made it to the end. I was curious to see how the Warriors would respond once Draymond got ejected. Would they step up? Would someone have energy? Would James Wiseman kind of show a little bit more? But none of that really happened. Everything just kind of flattened out, which is just a big reminder to all of us how thin the Warriors' margin of error is. Yes, most teams would be far worse if they were missing one or two of their most important players. But if Draymond is out, there's just such a drop. I mean, the same thing would happen if Steph were out, right? It would be like last season, right? When Draymond was the only person left standing. I didn't see much in terms of progress this game. James Wiseman was all right. Everybody was just kind of all right, but not good. You know, they were just like, yeah. If this were a game that I attended in person, I would have just been kind of pissed. (laughs) We saw Nico Mannion. Like I always say, I'm a full-time resident on Mannion Island. He played okay. I guess Kerr wanted another ball handler on the court. What I like about him is that on offense, he knows how to play point guard. He makes the right play. And he had a couple nice assists, but on defense is where he's going to continue to get abused until he gets more experience. And I think when he was brought into the game, the Warriors were down by like maybe six or seven. And then uh, by the end of his run, it was like, you know, maybe 12, 13, 14. So Kerr tried it, but it wasn't too successful along those lines. Anyway, I just really wonder if if this ref is going to get fined or something or reprimanded or punished or something, because that's just a dumb, like, really, you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of like a rookie cop who just gets freaked out and overreacts to someone he meets on the street. This game was a bummer because, because I was hoping that the 
Warriors would take advantage of this part of their schedule. And, you know, fingers crossed, maybe they come out of the Spurs game, the Knicks game, the Jazz and the two T-Wolves games, uh, maybe like four and one. That would have been nice. Yeah. If they come out three and two, then I guess that's better than nothing. But uh, they got to learn how to play on back-to-backs. They got to learn how to play without Draymond. I'm sure there's going to be a point this season where they're going to have to learn how to play without Steph. Um, even if he just sits out and they're going to have to learn how to play through trash officiating, you know, I mean, again, I don't like to complain about refs, you know, cause ultimately these calls even themselves out in the bigger picture. And like I said, the Knicks and the Warriors were called for pretty much close to the same number of fouls, but like to call fouls throughout, <laughs> to call so many fouls, it's just a bad product and it just makes it unenjoyable. Hopefully that's the lesson that they'll take and next time they're in any of these situations or they run into any of these circumstances, they will know what to do. Anyway, that's another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Patrick Epino, E-P-I-N-O, or at Oakland Warriors and check us out at OaklandWarriors.com. All right. That's it. Music in this episode provided by Paper Sun. Special thanks to Paul Amardo for production support. See you next time, and go Dubs. Go Dubs.